Hey guitar enthusiasts, welcome back. In this lesson video, we're gonna be doing Jim Croce's Leroy Brown, so let's get into the lesson. Now in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you a couple different ways to approach this song. We're gonna take an easier route, and then we're gonna take another route that's a little bit more like the way Jim plays it. The chords for this song are pretty simple. We have a G chord and a C chord as our open chords. And this is a great song for practicing your seven chords. So we have a D7, we have a B7, and I think that's it, and an A7. So there's three seven chords in this song. Now, if you need the lyrics and the chords and you want a chord chart to follow along, go to my website. I'll put a link in the description below. You can pull that up and follow along here. So for this intro, we're just gonna keep it simple. It's just gonna be G for eight measures straight. No changes. If you wanna spice it up, I'll show you how to do that. But first, let's talk about the strumming pattern we're gonna use. We're gonna be using an eighth note strumming pattern. So it's gonna be one and two and three and four and, but we're not gonna play it straight up like you normally would. So we're not gonna just go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and very straight on the timing. We're gonna do more of a shuffle feel. So there's a little bit of like a bluesy feel to this song and those seven chords add to that. So we're really gonna be doing almost like a triplet. One, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four. We're still gonna be doing down, up, down, up. But instead of one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and it's gonna be one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four. So it's a long strum and then short. And so it's gonna be long, short, 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 long. Okay, one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four. So that's a little bit more of a swung feel to it. So that's how we're gonna do the intro in the most simplistic of terms. Now, if you wanna spice up just a little bit and make it sound a little more like the record. Now, there is a lot of piano in this song, so the piano is gonna be taking care of a lot of those intricacies. So we're still gonna keep it simple, but on that last G, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna play a G for one beat, and then we're gonna switch right over to a D7 and finish out the rest of the measure on D7. So if I play four measures, we'd get three measures of G and then this quick measure. So it'd be one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, and. So I hear that, it's just one. And then the D7 we change on the up. So it's a two, a three, a four, and one, a two, a three, a four, and one, a two, a three, a four, and. And that's how we're gonna approach the intro. So do whichever one is easier for you. And let's get into our verses and our choruses. Real quick guys, if you are enjoying this video so far, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn the notifications on if you haven't already. This way, YouTube will let you know when I release more lessons just like this one. So the great thing that Jim does is he's really nice in that he keeps the chord progression the same for the entire song, so it's really great. And once again, I'm gonna give you two approaches to these verses and choruses. So let's start out with the chord progression, which is gonna be the same whether you're playing a verse or you're playing a chorus. So the chord progression is gonna be two G chords, two A7 chords, then we have a B7, a C chord, and this is where the split measures come in. So for the easy version, we're just gonna do D7 in the C chord splitting a measure, and then we're gonna do a G chord for an entire measure, okay? So that's the simplest way. So if I were gonna do this the simple way, this is what it's gonna sound like, and then I'll show you the, the slightly more intricate way that sounds a little bit more like the original song. So if we've got one, two, one, two, three. Well, the south side of Chicago. Da 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 So what did I do on those split measures? I just went down, down, up, down, down, up. So we have a C chord, or sorry, D7. So the D7 is gonna be one, two, and and the C chord is gonna be three, four, and. So we're just doing down, down, up on each of those. So it's down, down, up, down, down, up. And then when we get to G, it's back to normal. One, a two, a three, a four, and. So again, if I take it from the B7, um, da, 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 Down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down. 
down, up, down, up, down, up. And that's the same thing you would do on the chorus because the chorus follows the same exact chord progression. So what do we want to do now if we're going to spice it up? Let's see. So the first part stays the same. Where we're going to change is the last two measures of these verses and choruses. And on this one, I will play through a chorus just so that you guys can hear it. But first, let's talk about the intricacies of the strumming. So we're going to add an extra G chord in here. And on the end, we're going to add a, a D7. So let's talk about what's going to happen. So it starts the same. We're starting off with this D7, down, down, up. And then the C, we're going to do two downs. Three, four. So nothing has changed so far. So it's one, two, and three, four. And then on this up, we're going to switch to G. So the and of four is G. So it's one, two, and three, four, and. Okay? Down, down, up, down. It sounds like just for that first measure. One, two, and three, four, uh, okay? Down, down, up, down, down, up. And I keep saying and because I'm thinking about eighth notes, but it's, we're, this is still that shuffle pattern. It's still the shuffle pattern. Down, down, up, down, down, up. That's the first measure. Now the second measure, we are going to be starting on the G, we are not going to play a down strum on the one. It's going to be the up on the ah, uh, okay? So we went from down, down, up, down, down, up, up. Okay, so that's this second up is now into the next measure. So it's down, down, up, down, down, up, up. So we're just doing two ups on G, and then on the down of the two, Kind of like what we did in the intro. We're going right to D7, down, up, down, up, down, up. All right, so from the top, it's down, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, so it's down, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Now that second G, I'm only on it for a split second. I may not even get the whole chord. I might be lifting up the chord and jumping to that D7. So don't worry about having the G chord down for the entire time. It's more about the speed of getting to that D7 chord. So here we go, a couple more times. Down, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Again, down, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down. So now if I play this through a chorus, this is what it's gonna sound like. And another thing, there's one more thing I wanna mention, um, and you, I don't know if I did this on the verses, but you can make a little accent on your strumming here. So I know we were going one, a two, a three, a four, a one. What you can do is on your two and four, really strum the whole chord and make it loud, and your other strums keep it soft. It's gonna sound like this, ready? It's gonna, we're trying to imitate a snare drum, ready? One. A one, two, three, and he's bad, bad. Down, 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 up, up, down. All right, there you go. And this song is actually going a little bit faster than what I'm playing here, but you can hear that accent. It, it really drives the song than just going one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two. I will do a full demo at the end of this video, but I just wanted to say, hey, if you're liking this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up because it shows more of my videos to more students just like you. So the final verse, uh, Jim changes it up a little bit. So what we're gonna be doing on this final verse is we're just gonna be holding strums, keeping it very, very simple. So we have, you know, well, the two men took to fighting. So we're gonna be holding that G chord for two measures. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And when they pulled him from the floor, we're gonna to go to A7. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then B7 for Leroy. Leroy looked like a C jigsaw puzzle. And then with a couple of pieces gone, you can either do the down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Or you can do the more intricate one, whichever one. Down, down, up, down, down, up. 
So it picks up the strumming on that very last line, but the first one is just da 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 ba da bum ba da bum ba ba da ba ba da and then we go into a double chorus and then our outro, which changes a little bit. For this last chorus, you might not want to go to the D7. You might want to stay on the G. So this is meaner than a junkyard dog. So we've got meaner than a junkyard dog. So I'm going to stay on the G because we're going right back to B7. And I'm ba uh, badder than old King Kong, meaner than a junkyard dog. And this song ends on an up strum. We're ending on the G. We're not going back to the D7. So that outro is, and you were better than old king to see. Down, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. And that's what the, the last G is just up, down, up. And that's how the song ends on the outro. One, two, a one, two, three, ready. Hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. Leave me a comment below with songs you might want me to do here on YouTube. In the meantime, a couple more videos are going to pop up over here. Go check those out. Hopefully there's something that interests you. And I'll see you guys in another lesson video.